Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This episode is a continuation of our multifamily series. We'll have John Yee walk you through a high-rise weatherization project in uptown Chicago, where the agency developed a partnership with a rather unique residence association. Hi, my name is John Yee. I'm with CETA Weatherization in Chicago. We're in the Uptown neighborhood, and behind me you see the two towers. It's 4550 North Clarendon, also known as Lakeview Towers. It was one of our uh, weatherization projects from last year. 26 stories for each tower, 24,000 square feet total, 500 units, roughly 1,800 residents in total and uh, represented by about 20 different countries, over 20 different countries. This also is uh, the largest building that is tenant owned. So different from a co-op, this is run by an association that is again tenant owned and uh, we believe the largest of its kind in the United States. Caesar, being in the state of Illinois, approached us as our building was selected as a test to get into a big multifamily structure like ours. In our initial inspection of the building, we found that uh, the mechanical system was uh, definitely in need of replacement. We found the existing boiler system to uh, have an efficiency of about 60%. Then comes John and his engineers and contractors to come into the building to see the boiler system which was 45 years old, going to 46, the old border system. Tweak and tweak, it works, but energy we pay. The building association were actually going on a, uh, a renovation of their own. They were doing facade work. They were repairing the concrete work on the outside. They were recaulking windows, and they were also re renovating their own kitchens. So we found this to be a perfect partnership. CEDA allowed the collaboration between their side and the ownership of the building site as a unique joint effort. So here we're in the basement of uh, Lakeview Towers where the bulk of the uh, weatherization work we provided for uh, Lakeview Towers is in this room. To my right you can see the new uh, boiler systems that we had put in. Where you see the new boilers we actually had three large Spencer steam boilers for a total of 30 million BTUs. So in the retrofit, we've replaced those three large steam boilers with seven condensing boilers, three million BTUs each. Uh, in total, the heating plant now is 21 million BTUs, again, replacing a system that used to be 30 million BTUs, steam that fed into two heat exchangers, which then heated the water uh, and pumped to the parts of the building. This is a hydronic system, so now you're wondering why we replace the steam system with a, a, a hydronic system. That steam, steam system produced steam, which then went to two separate heat exchangers that were located right above those pipes there. Those heat exchangers then heated uh, water from the steam. The water was then pumped into two loops, a high temperature and a low temperature loop. The low temperature loop was the, the water that was sent up to the towers for space heating. The high temperature loop was then sent to two 20,000 CFM air handlers and it also heated the uh, common spaces of the building. So these five boilers you see are the boilers that feed into the uh, low temperature loop. The other two are on the back side and those feed into the uh, high temperature loop. And then to my uh, left is the control system. And uh, you can see here, this is for the high temperature loop and this is for the low temperature loop. Anywhere you have a internet connection, you can see what the boilers are doing and in fact manage them uh, online. 
To my right, you'll see four existing pumps that we were able to utilize. Uh, two are constant volume and the other two are actually variable. And we were using them, in fact, for our high temperature loop. To my left, you'll see four new pumps. And these are also two constant volume and then two variable. And these were then used for our low temperature loop. Up above me, you'll see the stainless steel venting. And that's critical, crucial to condensing boilers. Obviously, the condensing gases produced by the boilers are highly corrosive. The stainless steel liner in this particular case went up over the uh, 26 stories uh, of this building. So now we're on the roof of Lakeview Towers. You see the termination point of the stack. That's the stainless steel vent you saw and in the basement. Uh, the stainless steel venting continues through the chimney, the existing chimney of the building. So this insulated pipe you see that's running through the uh, untempered garage space is the supply and return lines for the other tower. We have a centrally located heating, heating plant in one, under one tower, and then these pipes run to a pump room on the other side. We decided to send the pipe through the garage, untempered garage space, uh, due to two, two factors. One is that we were able to cut the uh, run of the pipe down by taking a direct line to the pump room instead of routing it through the uh, common spaces of the ground floor. And then two, because there was no significant heat loss, in fact, by running it through an untempered garage space. Heat, water, gas, everything is supply free to each tenant based on the operation of the development. This building, uh, known as uh, Lakeview Towers, is wholly owned by Lakeview Towers Residents Association. Uh, again, different from a co-op, which are made up of uh, individuals that own the whole. In this case, it's a single entity. And in that single entity, tenants are then freely able to come and go. After the cedar work, full consumption based on before has been cut down 17%. As Stephen stated, this, the project was completed at the end of October. We had three months in a very cold winter, uh, November, December, and January, where, where the system was still being tweaked. So even to get 17% in, the, in, one, in the past year is actually very substantial. As they twist and retune, we know the future is going to save the building almost 20 to 25 percent in energy savings. This is a, a sort of an ongoing task for us, um, which I'm calling benchmarking, in fact, because we need to collect this data going forward. A uh, new thing in our program, in fact, and I will admit this is new, we, we're collecting much more information post and pre, pre uh, weatherization. We think our infrastructure is updated. We're able to reduce their liability on their utilities and thereby using their funds that they're collecting for bigger and better. And that's what they've done very well and effectively here. Stephen has uh, built a new community room, he's built a computer room, uh, he's built a fitness room. Uh, so those are the direct benefits of weatherization in a property like this. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Multifamily weatherization is gaining more attention. So we hope you find these case studies valuable to show you how some agencies are dealing with the complicated problems associated with installing energy efficient measures into the old systems found in these buildings. And if you have one to highlight, drop us a line. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information techniques and expert advice.